the book of uh, Luke chapter number 8 uh, Dole covered a portion of scripture that the Lord has given us for today and really feel like the Lord has uh, given this to us this morning we're going to read uh, Luke chapter 8 verse number 26 and we're going to go down to about verse number 30 31 somewhere through there and we'll stop and then the good Lord's will, we will conclude the rest of that. But this is the story of the the uh, maniac, is what I call him. Sometimes I don't say words exactly right in the Bible. I don't know how to pronounce them, so I just do the best that I can. But this old fellow was he was a maniac. He was crazy. When you when we read the scripture, you'll understand what was the matter with him. And the thing about it is, the biggest thing that was wrong with this individual is he did not know the Lord. We see people today all around us, all kinds. Uh, Some drunk, some drugs, some different various reasons. The prisons are full of individuals. And if you would stop and think for just a moment, those aren't bad individuals most of the time. They just made a bad choice. They made a bad choice. Those of us that are in church, raised in church, around the Lord and the things of the Lord, we had, just like everybody, the decision, the choices laid out in front of us And by the help of God, the help of the Holy Spirit, being around the things of God more and more, we made the right choice to go with the Lord. So in uh, Luke chapter 8, let's begin with verse 26 and read a few verses there. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And, and when he went forth to the to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. They besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord Jesus, for the good singing. Thank you for each one that's made their way out today. Lord, we beg and we plead, Lord, that the power of the Spirit of God rest upon your word in our midst. Lord, if there's anyone in our midst today that has a need, Sweet Jesus, I pray that they will make the right choice today. Lord, we just ask you for help. Bless these old lips of clay. Anoint God. Help your servant. Bless your word. What you do, we'll praise you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. We see in those first few verses that we read a description of a lost individual. You know, the Bible is real clear on the fact that you can't serve God and man. You have to serve one or the other. All through the ages, and especially in the New Testament age, we are given two choices. The Lord said there's two ways. Broad is the way, narrow. The Lord has always given two choices. 
You can you can make your own choice. I can't I can't my wife back there. I couldn't make her choice. Your mom and dad they can't make your choice. You have to make the choice yourself. And when you're thinking about that choice, you don't just need to think about the present nor the past. Think about your life. Think about how you're going to live. Who as a Christian that you might be able to help, to influence, to lead to Christ. Certainly you can think about the end of time. And don't let Satan fool you with this philosophy and this thought, I'll get saved right before I die. You're not promised that. The most terrible, terrible decision that a person can make is to reject the plan of salvation, to reject Jesus. That's the most difficult. You say, why is that most difficult? Because I believe what the Bible said and the Word of God says, if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, He, he will say, depart from me. Depart from me. Now you can say, yeah, and spend eternity in hell. Yes, sir. That's what he says. But I'm going to tell you something. To be away from God. I stand here this morning and I look over on this side, little Abby. And I look back there at, at Cabe and, and uh, Ryan. I look over here at Harper. You know what? You turn your back on the Lord and you make the wrong decision. Brother, there ain't going to be no babies and children where you're going. Look right here. Did a good cup of cold water. You, you say no to Jesus. Brother, I tell you, you'll never taste a good cold glass of water again. Rich man cried out from hell and he said, Please, Father Abraham, let him just tip the, the, the dip his finger in and let a drop of it fall on my lips. This rich fellow this morning, or the one here in the Word of God, he was uh, away from God. He made the wrong choice. And he was possessed. Now, get a picture of this fellow, if you will. In his life, running through the graveyards, running to and fro. The Bible said there in verse number 7, but in the tombs, didn't dwell in a house, didn't have no friends, didn't have no understanding of what he was doing. My calling today from God right now is to make sure that you understand your decision. I, I'm not going to make no decision for you. But I want you to understand today what it is. This fella was dead. This fella was empty. The Bible tells us without the Spirit of God, you're dead. You're none of His. You have no understanding. You go to church and you see people cry. You see people lift their hand. You see people rejoicing. You can even see people out of the church, good Christian people, going through some terrible times and they're still rejoicing. Why? Because they made the decision to ask Jesus to be their Savior. They didn't ask for a new leaf to turn it over and live good for a while. They made a decision to ask Jesus to be their Savior. This man running around, it's the saddest picture. And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What am I to do with thee? Jesus. He knew who he was. 
He knew who Jesus was. But he didn't want him. In the beginning, folks today, they don't want Jesus. Hey, listen, I can speak to you as an experienced young man today. I, I made many excuses. The Lord would just take all of my time. Church takes all of my time. I wouldn't have time for nothing if I go into that preaching stuff. I made every excuse there was. Satan will keep you busy. Satan will keep you preoccupied until it's too late. This man got off, Jesus got off the ship and headed toward him, and he was out there. And he said, What have I to do? Listen, this man was possessed, possessed with demon. Brother, he had so many demons in him, as we see if we get on down there. He had so many demons in him that a herd of hog, when he cast them out of that one man, and he cast them into that hogs, that the, every hog ran over a cliff and drowned itself. A hog would rather die than to live with what a lot of people are living with today. Being told what to... Listen, somebody's telling you what to do. Somebody's leading you, either you're a, a savior or Satan. People don't believe that either, but it's true. It's true. This man had nothing. This man was pitiful. He was dead. He was alone. He was naked. He wouldn't stay in the house. And each time you read about these individuals in the Bible, they try to catch them and they try to bind them and they try to do this. Honey, nothing works. There's nothing, nothing that can defeat Satan on this earth. Nothing. Until this fellow stepped off the ship. And this fellow stepped off the ship named Jesus. Well, I'll never forget the day that he came my way. Hallelujah. He came my way. And every thought run through my head. I'll go next Sunday. I'll go tonight. I'll go later. Not right now. This fellow was dead. He had no real friends. He, he just like the, in a sense, like the prodigal son. He now nothing, dead, without Jesus. And that's the picture of being lost, of making the wrong choice. And the Bible said in verse thirty-one, and they besought him that he would command them to go out into the deep. And there was there in the herd of, uh, of many swine feeding on the mountains, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. Do you see what happened? you see where that wrong choice takes you? See, that man... By the mercy of Jesus, he got rid of those demons. And those hogs, brother, die. Brother, die. And you look around at folk today and you see them and, and they're pitiful. They're scarred because of drugs. They're scarred because of alcohol. They're a human being. They're somebody's son. There's somebody's daughter. There's some family person. Our brother uh, that, that, that grandma prayed for until she died. That that grandmother, that that dad, or that that mom that they prayed for until they left this world. Quit looking at them and, and making your thoughts or judgment. Honey, there's somebody, hallelujah, that needs to be separated from the bondage of sin and given an opportunity to make the right choice. 
Help them to make the right choice. If you don't see evidence in their life of Jesus, if you know that they've not accepted Christ, Honey, pray for them when you go to bed. Pray for them when you go. get up. Pick up where grandpa and grandma. Pick up where mom and dad left off. And pray for them. Those hogs said we'd rather die. But now listen to the world. This is always there. The Bible said, uh, then the, uh, let's see, where is that? When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Now what about that? You see, they tried everything to bind that guy. They tried everything to chain that guy. They was afraid of him. And they couldn't do it. Well, Jesus comes in and delivers him from the bondage. You know what them folks wanted? They wanted the devil out of that man, but they didn't want their hogs bothered. Look at it. He, he's killed our hogs. People today want to see people separated from the bondage of sin, of drugs and alcohol and whatever it may be, but they're not willing to pay the price. The Bible says in Isaiah, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken, it's in Isaiah, that without travail, there is no new birth. We want to see somebody accept the Lord. Yes, sir. Anytime, anywhere. But do we prove it with our knee marks? <laughs> Talking about me. Then they went out to see what was done. Came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now listen. He was naked he was hungry, he was homeless, he was helpless, and he was sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. What about that? Do you see what a difference that the right decision makes? That man had made the wrong decision all of his life. He was running through the graveyard naked. He was homeless. He was helpless. He was a put a fear in people. He was afraid himself. He couldn't face the world. He didn't have no friends, nobody to talk to. He got made the wrong decision and he had went so far. Listen, the devil don't really care this morning as long as he can keep you where you're at. If you're out of the will of God or if you're lost, the devil don't really care about you. He just lied to you and told you that he did. This fellow here, when Jesus come by and Jesus came to where he was at and he cast a ball, he just delivered him. You remember what it was like when you got saved? Most everybody, when you get birthed into the family of God, you have went through a time period of the Holy Ghost of God coming into your heart, revealing to you that you're lost without Jesus, revealing to you that if you don't accept Christ and make the right choice, you'll lift your eyes in hell. When we remember that, get up and go down to the altar and ask Jesus as our Savior and push away pride and push away what everybody thinks, and listen to the Spirit of God. Woo! You know, wonder people shout when they get saved. We ought to shout when somebody around us gets saved. Why well, is a happy day when the lady? I don't believe I'll ever forget that. No, Mama, I'm going by myself. Amen. She's smarter than every one of us. She she knew it was something her and the Lord need to talk about. Brother, the Spirit of God deals with your heart. You don't have to wait no certain time. You don't have to wait no certain place. You can be doing anything. You can be anywhere. If the Holy Ghost of God speaks to your heart, cry out to Him right where you're at. 
Oh, that theory of getting saved in church, honey, that's awesome. That just lets God's people see what the Lord's done for their prayers and for you. But it's not a have-to case. This old fella, he, he was clothed and in his right mind. They also which saw it told them by what means he had that was possessed of the devil was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them. Look at that. Get away from here. Get away. There's something different. Get out, get out of here. Remember how it was when you was lost and all your friends when you got saved? A few of friends. They weren't as close to you as they was when you was lost. They wanted Jesus and this man to depart for they were taken with great fear and he went up, up into the ship. You know why there's great fear? Because they seen this man before. They seen how he acted. They seen how he was living. They tried to do all those things. It didn't do any good. They thought all hope was gone until, praise God, Jesus come by. Jesus made an effort in that man's life. He, he changed his mind. He changed his direction. He changed his heart. He changed everything about him. The Bible said that in the whole multitude of the country, the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man of whom the uh, devils were departed besought him that he might be with him, that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Hey, hey, Lord, I want to be where you are. Lord, I, I like what you've done for me. Lord, you done something in my heart that nobody could do. Lord, you took away that hate and filled it with love. Lord, you took away that confusion and filled it with understanding. You took away that pain and healed it with, with feeling. You took away that loneliness and you replaced it with fellowship. Oh, Lord, I'm a new person in my heart. This old body may ache and hurt, but I'm a new person in my heart because of what Jesus done. He said, let me just stay where you are. Lord, just let me stay where you are. I want to be near you. Me too. Well, they come a period of time after you got saved, you look forward to going to church. Hey, Amen. We look forward to going to church. He said, return to thine own house. Boy, that's, that's, a, that's a tough place. <laughs> that's a tough place. Never know. And show how great thing. He's not saying that's all he had to do was show how great thing. I, I used this one time in the message that we've got to show and tell salvation. Remember that little game I used to, that little thing I used to do in school? I don't know if you still do it or not. You go in, you show and tell. I never will forget my girls two or three different times. They wanted dad to come down and show them my thumbs. Show and tell. Look at that. Boy, ain't that. Praise God, we ought to be that ready. You show and tell what Jesus has done. Has Jesus changed your life? Do you want to be around him all the time? Are you thankful? Brother, I'm going to tell you something. I spend a whole lot more time murmuring and complaining, God forgive me, than I do giving him praise for what he's done. He never done nothing else in my life. I don't have to worry about dying and going to hell. Because I'm saved by the grace of God. He said, Lord, I want to be with you. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus this morning. The vision, the call that God gave me today was to help you to understand making that bad choice. That fellow made a bad choice and he ended up Listen, listen today, church. There's not one young person, and it ain't just young people. 
But there's not one person in the jail up here in Yancey County. There's not one person that's in the prisons over in Mitchell Avey County over there. There's not one of them that's, that's uh, in there because they said, well, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and snip a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and shoot up one time. They didn't plan to do that. But it happened. Why? Why does it happen? Because they didn't have nothing to redirect their heart. They didn't have nothing. They didn't have the Spirit of God. They didn't have nothing to redirect their heart and to show them that that's a wrong choice. I'm telling you today, I want you to understand today what it is to make the wrong choice. It's death. It's empty. It's friendless. It's nothing. It's nothing. After a while, all the glory fades away. You have nothing. Boy, I'm so thankful that I made the right choice. That I asked Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Every head bowed and every eye closed if Miss Rebecca wouldn't care. I just want to give you a little opportunity here. Really feel like this morning that there's a, someone that's got maybe some choices to make. And you want to be sure you make the right one. I don't know, it might be even a, a choice about a job or anything. You want to make the right choice. I want the Christians to pray if you would. I'm not going to come back there and jerk your arm. I'm not going to do that. But I just want the church to pray for you. Is there one in this building today? But if you stepped out on the front porch of this church and the Lord Jesus said, come up hither, would you go? There'll not be time then to make things right. There'll not be time to say I'm sorry. One anywhere. One anywhere. Oh, if you want to pray this morning, the altar's open. Your heart's heavy for somebody, the altar's always open. But do we have one anywhere? Or we'll just say, I'm just not satisfied. Something bother me. Just talk to the Lord and let Him help you to make the right choice. There won't anywhere. Don't put Him off if He spoke to your heart today. Don't say no. You'll never regret it. I'm an old man and I've never regretted asking Jesus to be my Savior. Has life always been good? Nope. I've got pains and sorrows and heartaches just like you. But I also have the Comforter. I have the Comforter that lives in my heart and enables me to make the right decision. Want anywhere, just lift your hand. I'm not going to come to you. By lifting your hand, just simply say, God, you just pray for me. God bless the hands. God bless the hands. God bless the hands. All over the church. God bless the hands. Help us, church, to be strong prayer warriors. They can't take that away from us. We can pray. One anywhere I need to make a move. We're going to pray. Our precious Heavenly Father today, Lord, how we thank you and how we praise you for the open door of salvation, open door of worship, the open door of all that you bring to us. We thank you and praise you today. God, we thank you for each and every one at the church today, Father. Lord God, we pray you'd touch them and bless them and help them. 
God, we pray that you'd help each one of us to make the right choice on a daily basis. Joshua said, choose you this day. Father, help us, I pray, to make the right choice to live for you on each day. Lord, make the right choice today to know that you're our Savior. But Lord, to make the right choice each day to live for you. Forgive each of us, Lord, wherein we've sinned and failed. Lord, bless the honest hearts today that's got burdens. Help us, I pray. Bless the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.